Hello folks, this is Jamil Surfer for Gunstruck Reviews. We're here in Phoenix, Arizona at the law offices of Tim Forshee with Tim. How you doing, buddy? Good, buddy. How are you doing? Good to see you. How are you doing, Tim? Good. And again, it's a new year and we're starting, we're starting our new year running with a bunch of questions. Great. And we have a bunch of questions from our viewers. So I'm going to combine a couple of questions here okay. for you. Number one, what do you do when you are lawfully carrying a firearm in your, on yourself or in your car? and you get stopped by a cop, by the cops. Because cops don't stop you for nothing. They usually stop you because you've done something boneheaded. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it doesn't mean you're a bad driver or anything like that. I do boneheaded things. We <laughs> you, all do, sure. We all do. Sometimes we just get distracted by the world and I can tell you stories about the times I've been stopped, okay? <laughs> and I, you know, I'll tell you what I do after you give me your explanation. And then another viewer asked, what happens if you're driving a vehicle in Arizona? Because he is specific about Arizona. Um, if you're driving a vehicle that is not registered to you. I do that all the time because my wife's vehicle is registered in her name, uh -huh. not my name. Well, okay. we need to fix that, first of all. That's a whole domestic relations issue. We'll yeah. cover that in another video. So. <laughs> <laughs> so, Tim, what do you think? Those two questions combine into one. Well, let's go. Let's cover the easy one first, Emil. Um, there is no requirement that the vehicle that you're driving has to be registered for you in order for you to enjoy your Second Amendment self-defense rights in the state of Arizona. I'm not sure where that question came from. Probably just some misinformation. Somebody at a party acted like they were pontificating or something, but that's absolutely not correct. Um, so you're perfectly fine to drive the vehicle registered to your wife while you're carrying a concealed weapon, a rental car, if you want to borrow my vehicle. You don't lose your Second Amendment rights because the vehicle that you're driving is registered to someone else. So don't worry about that. The, uh, the bigger question, and the one that we all do have to deal with, is the issue about how to deal with a routine traffic stop. So um, let's not forget a couple things. Uh, first of all, have you ever noticed how cops tend to be kind of crabby at the beginning of a traffic stop, but by the end of the traffic stop, they're not crabby anymore? Have you ever wondered why that is? People don't seem to think this through. Because they're scared, that's why. Uh, something like 28% of all firearm, or of all uh, law enforcement fatalities occur during routine traffic stops. They're very dangerous. Cops know this. I've had to do traffic stops when I'm doing auxiliary law enforcement work. And I had, remember one night I had to knock on the window of a, a vehicle with like six guys in it, uh, filled with smoke. I didn't know what kind of smoke. At 2 o'clock in the morning in a rural area in, in, in uh, southeast of Chandler, uh, Leonard Skinner's uh, 38, or, uh, Saturday Night Special playing full blast. And I remember walking up to knock on that window being absolutely scared to death. I didn't know what I was going to encounter. The window rolled down and it was cigarette smoke and they were a bunch of nice guys and it went fairly smoothly, but I was scared to death. And have you ever noticed that when you're scared, you act crabby to people, you're short tempered, you know, something, you're in a, in a scary movie and something happens and you, and you get scared and your, your body jolts and then, and then your daughters make fun of you and you say something mean to your daughters. We're, we're crabby and jerky when we're, when we're frightened. That's how humans act. So understand that police officers are under a lot of stress and they might be acting like jerks because they're frightened. So let's do everything we can to make them not frightened, okay? Uh, lower all four of your windows. Keep your hands on the steering wheel where they can see your hands at all times. Be polite and respectful. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. No, sir. No, ma'am. Uh, how many people keep the registration and insurance documents in their glove box? The vast majority of us don't. That's a very stupid place to keep your registration documents. Why? Because during the traffic stop, when the officer says registration, please, and you reach for your glove box, what do you think the message that sends to the police officer? Um, in Arizona, there's a huge number of people that have concealed weapons in their vehicle, and a very dominant percentage of those people keep the gun in the glove box. The cop doesn't know what you're reaching for, but they know you may be reaching for a gun. So you put the cop on defensive, they're going to blade, they're going to put their hand on their weapon, you can't see them because you're reaching for the glove box. But that just adds stress to everybody during a traffic stop. Take those documents out of your glove box, put them on your sun visor with a little Office Max clip, and go, here you go, officer. And you're going to hear the officer say the word namaste as everybody's blood pressure stays nice and low. Let's just take a stressful part of that traffic stop out of the traffic stop. So uh, the, the real rule of thumb here is that it is absolutely required by law in the state of Arizona that if the officer asks if you're armed, if the officer asks if there's a weapon in the vehicle, uh, then you are required to tell them honestly, which seems like kind of a dumb law to me because otherwise we're telling you to lie to a cop. That's a pretty dumb, stupid thing to do. So if the cop asks, you must tell. My very, very strong advice, this isn't the law, but it's very strong advice after years of experience with this, is if you're not asked, shut up. You are not in charge of this traffic stop. The officer is. Uh, think about it this way. The officer pulls me over for speeding. The officer walks up and says, license, registration, insurance. And I say, officer, before we go any further, uh, I looked in my rearview mirror. I noticed the way you parked your car. It gives me concern. I think you're intruding on oncoming lanes of traffic just a little too much. Do me a favor. Before we start, would you go back and move your car a couple feet to the right? 
How do you think the officer is going to react to that? Because in my mind, it's kind of the same thing as telling them how this traffic stop is going to go with regard to your firearm. Um, if they want to know if you have a firearm, they're going to ask you if you have a firearm. Guess what? That's a misnomer because every cop wants to know whether you have a firearm. But every cop that I've encountered, with the exception of one, was smart enough to know that it doesn't make any sense to ask. Why bother asking if you have a gun in the car? Let's think about that for just a second. Let's take both ends of the spectrum, okay? You're a law-abiding firearms owner. You've never been convicted of any crime. You've never even had a speeding ticket your whole life. You have sat through a whole bunch of different classes. You've got your CCW permit. You're a competitive shooter. You're a, a, a steadfast member of society. You volunteer your time. You're happily married. You've raised great kids. And the police officer says, Mr. Sway, do you have any uh, firearms in the vehicle this evening? And what are you going to tell him? With your hands on the steering wheel, politely, you're going to say, yes, sir, I do. It's on my right hip, sir, at the 4 o'clock position. And I also have my CCW permit in my wallet in my left hip pocket, sir. What would you like me to do next, sir? And then the officer is going to tell you, and you're going to do it. Okay? So here's my question. At the end of that traffic stop, did the officers, having asked you if you had a gun in your car, make him or her any safer? The answer is no, because they were no danger in the first place. You weren't going to harm them, right? Mm -hmm. Now let's look at the other end of the spectrum. Okay? You're a a three-time convicted murderer who escaped from prison in Florida, and you've been on a cross-country crime spree, the likes of which this country's never seen. You've murdered eight cops in the last three days. You've got seven bloody Glock 17s stuck to the carpet in the backseat of your car. And the officer says, do you have any uh, firearms in the vehicle, sir? What are you going to say? No, nothing to see here, sir. And the minute the cop turns around, you're going to execute the cop. Okay? Is that cop any safer there because they asked you if you had a gun in the car? Nope. Can we agree that that's both ends of the bell curve? Yep. Both cops figured this out. Really, it doesn't make them any safer to ask you if you have a gun in the car. And then it also starts a succession of events that can sometimes get a little bit out of control. Mm -hmm. It's, it's uh, very possible that you have a gun that that cop has absolutely no idea what the manual of arms is. Hand him an H&K P7M8 and uh, when he's only fired a Glock his entire life and let's see if the cop can make that gun safe to everybody in, in the area without harming somebody. Let's see if the monkey gets hurt by playing with the football. So I don't want to make that part of a traffic stop if I don't have to. So I'm not going to mention the word gun unless I'm specifically asked, in which case with my hands on the wheel, I'm very politely and succinctly going to tell them what's going on and then do whatever they tell me to do as long as it's not dangerous to me or to them. If it's dangerous to me or to them, I'm probably going to ask them if they really want me to do that because here would be a potential problem with me doing so and hopes they'll rethink that what they're saying and they'll be smart about it. Um, at the end of the day, I'm not going to do something that endangers me or the other, or the other person. Uh, and if that means I get arrested, so be it. Um, but, you know, safety is more important than the law. So, uh, so I think those are all good rules of thumb. Uh, if asked, you must tell. If not asked, shut up. Uh, but make sure that you do what the officer says. If the officer says step out of the vehicle and you've got a gun on, you better tell him you've got a gun on because you're about to get patted down pursuant to Terry versus State of Ohio. And that's a very important uh, Supreme Court case that gives them the right to pat you down without probable cause. Uh, I know that. You now know that. So if the officer asks you to step out of the vehicle, give him the same speech. Officer, just in case you're planning on patting me down, sir, I better let you know I'm carrying a gun at the 4 o'clock position. I'm not a right hip, sir, and I also have a CCW permit. What would you like me to do now, sir? But if the officer doesn't ask me if I have a gun, if the officer doesn't ask me to step out of the vehicle, I am not mentioning the word gun during a traffic stop. And by the way, I've had 10 traffic stops since 1994. I was armed for all 10. Only one of those did the officer ask me if I had a gun in the car. I gave the speech I just told you that I gave. The officer very politely said, okay, how about if we do this? Why don't you leave your gun where it is and I'll leave my gun where it is? And I said, that sounds like a swimming idea, officer. I literally said that. Uh, but it kind of begs the question after the event, why'd you bother asking me that? Mm -hmm. And I think if he'd asked that cop, then he probably wouldn't have had a good answer. Mm -hmm. So that's great. I don't know if that helps. That's uh, again one of those things you can talk about for an hour or for two minutes, and I probably did bad at both. So that's great information, Tim. Because I mean, literally, there's two things I did not know. Number one, I was told that you had to tell the the cop that you had a gun, uh -huh. even if he didn't ask. Yeah, you. not correct. And I was wrong. And I heard it's one of those things. One of those. Uh, facts or fiction right. that you hear at the range or at the gun store right. that usually are wrong. Yep, very okay? common. That's not the place you get your legal <laughs> advice from. So, or at the gun show. Right, oh yeah, always at the gun show. Uh, quick, uh, brief, two of my traffic stops. One time I was going, I think five or six miles too fast on a construction zone up in Sun City and a deputy you know, Maricopa County deputy stopped me. And I had my Safari Land shirt on. Says Safari Land. So much for concealment. So much for concealment. <laughs> and he asked me, do you have a gun in your car? And I said, no, I don't. 
And his answer was, why not? <laughs> <laughs> All right, our kind of cop. You know, and I'm like, I just came from the post office. And he used an expletive and feds right after that <laughs> expletive. And, but he says, you're right. Next time, just live in your golf compartment, lock it, and you'll be okay. Uh -huh. And you can, when you leave the premises, put it back on yourself, mm -hmm. and you'll be good to go. Mm -hmm. The other time, I was going at, in one of the parkways, which is interesting. They call them parkways, and they have a 40-mile-an-hour speed limit. Right. And there was no, it was about 20 of us in the, in the, in the vicinity going very fast, mm -hmm. okay? And I got stopped. And the officer, when, when asked, he asked me, do you have a gun in the car? And I said, yes, sir, I have, like you said, in my right-hand side, he goes, please don't reach for it. Mm -hmm. Give me your information. You know, are you aware, da, 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 da. I said, sir, honestly, that was a, you know, head and rectum inversion. And he laughed, he goes, it happens. He checked me, he went to his, patrol car, I met, and he ran my driver's license and my registration, found out that I'm not a piece of crap. Came back, I said, look, he just told me, I'm gonna let you go even though you're going very fast, but everybody around you was going very fast. I just happened to stop you. You know, just go about your business and slow down because, you know, even though people are going around you, what happens is you follow others. Mm -hmm. And when the guy in front of you is doing 60 in a 40 or 45, you tend to follow that other car. And he said, yeah, go for it. So that's great information. That's a great answer. And I know our viewers are gonna enjoy it. And like always, guys, if you like this kind of content, please like, share, and subscribe to this channel. And like always, please stay healthy, be safe, and definitely have fun at the range. Thank you for watching Gunstock Reviews. Please visit our website at www.gunstockreviews.com for more exclusive content. Please visit our Patreon page at www.patreon.com slash gunstockreviews. Your contributions would be greatly appreciated and help us grow our selections and frequency of videos.